Hello, I'm Bradley, and welcome to my channel. Okay, so this is a little bit of a difficult, um, difficult sort of step to take, but however, my channel right from the start has always been about the bumpy road of life, whether it's up and down. And I actually originally started my channel to help me manage with the problems I was coming up against health-wise. Um, back then it was regards to hearing, overcoming hernia repairs and the difficulties all around that. Now the last time I would, I probably done an update on my hernia situation and steroid injections and things was between June and August of last year. Um, now I'd love to report that things have been brilliant since then but in matter of fact they're they haven't been, they have probably grown a lot worse, um, and one awful lot of problems, I have to admit. Um, so this video today is all about capturing that and hopefully being able to look back on this in the future when I'm through all of these problems. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, okay, so I'm Bradley and I have had hernia problems for the last three years. My first hernia repair was November uh, 2017. Um, it was back in June of that year. I had, before that time, I'd never had any problems at all. Um, June of that year, I had a family holiday, um, done all the normal holiday things, had an amazing time, um, done some cycling, and on one of those bikes where quite a lot of people are on it with my family, done some cycling with, actually it was my brother at the time, um, Shortly after that, didn't really feel any problems, but I felt a heaviness in my groin, um, in my right groin. Um, then about a day or two later, I slipped by the side of the pool and fell over. In fact, I actually ha fell and hurt my hand and thought I broke my thumb. Um, matter of fact, then later on that day, I felt a lump in my groin. Um, really uncomfortable, really quite painful, but not to the point where I thought it would cause me so many problems. And thinking on three years ahead, never in a million years would I think that I'd had so many problems. So that's when it really all started. Um, Sort of when I got back home in England, it was uh, it was causing me a lot of problems, um, but eventually it kind of fell off in the background. It wasn't until I went on holiday then in September of that year uh, where I had some problems again with that on holiday, doing some things on holiday, the typical things, sort of lots of walking, lots of sightseeing, um, lots of swimming. Um, then I started to have problems, worse so than my previous holiday in the June of that year. Um, then on my flight back to England, that's when it all became such an issue and on board that flight on the way home I had horrific pain um, and I had an awful awful sensation of this hernia or, which I didn't really realise back then because I never even knew really what a hernia was this something, this bulge of something being dragged that's all I can remember as a dragging sensation and the pain honestly I thought it was really going to I thought I was really going to be really unwell on that flight and actually I managed to get back home and I was fine but the only thing I can kind of feel like what it felt like walking with is that something which had been sort of really really uncomfortably lodged there and trying to walk with it so walking became an issue straight off and that was in September of 2017 I straight away I went to the doctors and I was diagnosed with that I had a hernia there at this time, I was starting to have bladder related problems as well. So I was starting to need the bathroom more often, um, an uncomfortable sensation there, never really having that relief, thought no more of it. Um, I thought I got a hernia there, very uncomfortable. I started, started having to wear a truss belt where the hernia was getting bigger. It was coming down. This was changing within weeks, actually. Um, and in not a great length of time, I was struggling at work. Um, so up and down stairs, those type of things, uh, moderate lifting at times, um, and it really became an issue very, very quickly. Uh, and thanks to uh, medical insurance, which I had at the time, I was able to have it done quite quickly. So I had lots of appointments, scans. It was quite a frightening experience because all the time I was having this bulge come through in my groin, which was making things very, very difficult to carry on with normal life. I was wearing quite a tight truss belt to hold the hernia up out of the way. Um, and at this time, it really made me feel very low in life with hearing problems as well. Uh, really, I, eating was not a thing for me. I was really quite off of everything, to be honest with you, and quite a recluse. I wouldn't really go out too much. Um, and things were very, very difficult in more ways than just having to deal with the hernia. So I had the hernia surgery done in November 17 and on this particular on the particular morning of the surgery I remember saying I had this other lump just up above this particular bulge of hernia and um, 
I remember being highlighted to me that we'll have a look, we're doing exploratory um, and we will put everything right which we can and we will do our best for you. Now, from that surgery, straight away I was in a lot of discomfort, a lot of pain. I had some lymph nodes taken away and I had the hernia repaired, um, which was a, a feminal hernia, which I had repaired. Now, straight away I felt really discomfort and it was quite a weird sensation. I thought I was going to be well quickly straight off. Now, anybody I would have thought at my age, which I was 24 back then, I would have thought I would have got on quite quickly and quite well. I didn't. It actually, I was very slow to recover. It was a good four to five weeks before I felt well. Now, the thing which tripped me up was three days later of being in lots of pain, I started severely vomiting. And as anybody can imagine, after having surgery in that area and being sick and lunging with your stomach muscles, it was horrific. As, as horrific as it sounds, it really, really was. Um, and that's when, bearing in mind the bladder problems hadn't gone away, this was when these issues really started to be paramount. Things were happening which shouldn't have been happening, and it was really, really awful. The sensation there, the, the problems of having to go to the bathroom all the time. I won't go into a lot of different things, but it was horrific for somebody of my age. It was a really nasty, awful experience. Um, and I would say, before I even got to uh, a point of feeling well was about eight weeks. Um, eight weeks of Christmas that year was quite difficult. It was very much me putting a front on, very much me sort of smiling, but inside actually feeling really quite unwell. Um, that took a toll on me mentally, that took a toll on me at work, that took a toll on me personally. Um, and it wasn't until the February I actually managed to return to work. So it was November to the the February things were pretty awful and still putting up with these bladder issues which I thought was just because of the trauma I'd had with the hernia um, but of course bearing in mind I still felt a small lump the day of that surgery in November now things was awful February I returned back to work on a phased return and my team were fantastic at supporting me with that I was still having bladder related problems and managing it and unfortunately really sad to think that it was becoming a normal part of me using the bathroom much more times throughout the run of a day having an uncomfortable sensation there a very 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 overactive bladder um and having this uncomfortableness there all the time um which really didn't leave me it was treated under a urologist um apparently i say treated it never really went away it just got sometimes better and then sort of really got really quite worse at times and I tried numerous medications for that and appointment after appointment with the doctor and really literally sometimes sat in front of specialists saying this has wrecked my life what can I do um, and really really awful and um, so I returned to work on the February of 2018 and very shortly after I was having checkups with the surgeon who'd done the surgery and it was found that I had had a second hernia this time being inguinal and i kind of realized in my own self that with having these bladder problems it should have gone away because i never had a bladder problem before i had hernias then i had the hernia the feminal hernia then it went away the bladder problem kind of got a little bit better but not fully and then after recovery the second hernia came along and the bladder problem just got worse and it was awful really really awful um again sometimes doing very short car journeys was horrific because there's not that many public conveniences around um bathrooms only of course in restaurants um and those type of places really so it made life very very difficult and um, so it was really good to have quite a strong support network my parents were absolutely fantastic throughout this time my brothers and my family were incredible but of course i was living the nightmare and it was just that now this is up to a point then I had the surgery for the second one done in July 2018. Now when I had that surgery um, I have really bad acid reflux and I don't do too well under anaesthetic so the second time I had a different type of anaesthetic um, but straight away after that surgery it was repaired um, I still had I remember waking up from the anaesthetic and my bladder was horrific i needed to go to the bathroom that many times it was incredible and it was really really difficult to manage and that was in july of 18 um i i don't think i returned back to work until about the 
late September, possibly start of October. Um, it took, again, I was very, very slow to recover for some reason, but nobody kind of questioned this. And I thought to myself, then, of course, I was 25. Why am I so slow at recovering with this? And I had episodes when my bladder problems and the sensation in my groin was just not normal, but I voiced this and it wasn't happening. Um, but then, of course, after so many appointments, and of course it takes a toll on you, I then, as I, after I returned to work in September, thought that I'm back at work, the hernia problems are of a past memory now, I had feminal, had inguinal, um, really never thought I would have to ever deal with that again. Um, bladder problems, some days they were good, some days they were severe, some days they were unbearable to manage. Um, and I went through, I think from when I had the first surgery done, I went, probably, I had that surgery and then I had about a two month period where I didn't really have, I had the problem there but it wasn't so severe, it was there all the time. And then when I had the surgery in July of 18, the bladder problems were pretty much there, I would say, when I went back, right up until when I went back to work. And then it was me trying to rearrange my life around that problem. Um, but manageable, uncomfortable, but manageable with lots of, um, I tried several different medications to be treated for overactive bladder. Nobody thought that these problems were connected. They just thought that it, it had happened. It was one of those things which happened. Um, and again, back and forth the doctors, back and forth specialist appointments, scans, nothing really too much come of it. Um, and then it was where the problem really took hold because throughout this time I was also having gastric problems. Um, I've always, I've had problems with uh, acid reflux for quite a long time. Um, so I was having, I remember in February 2019, I had a gastroscopy, all the camera down your throat and everything. And I remember having to travel from where I am about an hour to the to a hospital, um, which wasn't my local one, but it was the one I had to go to for these uh tests and appointments for the acid problem um, and that was a health scare I had there as well and um, the car journeys with this bladder problem I could feel things were getting worse so from July 18 things were pretty steady up until about Christmas and then things were sort of starting to change again things were going back like I needed the bathroom more um, the sensation wasn't really leaving me I, wa I wasn't having that relief of visiting the bathroom it was always there um, January of 2019, horrific, really started to get really, really bad again. February, I had the gastroscopy and I had all these investigations for, uh, for acid problems, um, which I often manage now with medication for having acid reflux problems. Um, but indigestion for me really isn't common on top of all these problems. And I was, in the end, I never actually finished my investigations because of the bladder related problems. Um, and that was 2019 and it has been a very difficult very difficult year up until now with bladder related problems so i put on a front i'll be very honest i put on a front quite a lot of the time of course it's not i say it's not there all the time it's for a solid year now it's whereas before i had times where it would go and come and go and then come back it's there pretty much all the time now but i've just learned to live with it so through sort of not not um Basing things on my bladder when I need to go because it's so overactive, basing it on the time. So making sure that I can go um, and doing all these sort of exercises and things to try and keep things as tight and as firm as possible after the, after these problems I've had. I've tried absolutely everything. Um, and throughout this year, I could still feel in the last year, pretty much from January 2019, I could feel a dropping sensation. Now, when I'm going down the stairs around Christmas time, 2018 to New Year's 2019, going down the stairs, I could, something started happening where I could feel a dropping sensation, like a clunking in my scar. So I've had both the hernias on the same side and I could feel a dropping sensation, very uncomfortable. My biggest fear nightmare is something back. Now, I had lots and lots of appointments around this top specialist I seen, um, but assured me I had a scan. There was no hernia. Um, really difficult to take. It was then managed with a, a course of steroid injections. Um, and that was, I'd say, early part of 2019 to about mid part 19 of having 
steroid injections. First one worked amazingly. Sadly, only lasted for about six weeks. Then the problems came back because what I was having was my my foot on my right side would actually change colour, like a bluish tinge. Um, I'd get pins and needles in my leg, and I'd always think that that I never happened before the surgery. Why am I dealing with it now? And it was actually when I went and highlighted this with a dent with my dentist, who I've known since I was very since I was born. Actually, I've only ever known one dentist, and he I happened to say to him. But I'm not feeling very well today. This is a problem which I've got. And he highlighted it to me that this was certainly not normal after hernia surgery and I should pursue it. So again, I ramped up the appointments with the doctor and I went and seen more specialist appointments, but everything was normal. So then I had a second course of steroid injections, which to be honest, done nothing at all. Um, this was kind of left then, um, kind of left in the background. Problems wasn't too bad with the dropping sensation. I just tried to carry on with it. Then we have got to December 2019, where I was starting to feel this problem. And I, all throughout 2019, I had so many doctor's appointments about bladder problems. It was horrific. Um, thinking I had infections, no, nothing. Um, I just had this really, really strong, severe, overactive bladder. And I thought I would never know no different. So December... 19 having so many problems, I decided then to go and see the GP um, and said that my life was just falling apart. I had problems with the bathroom all the time and I had this clunking sensation in my groin and I can't quite remember how many appointments throughout last year I had, but I had a lot of them. It was then highlighted that there was a gap. The doctor could feel a gap in my hernia scar. Now straight away I absolutely remember just just thinking to myself, what on earth am I going to do? I've gone from at the start of the year, somebody, me thinking I had a third hernia, and somebody categorically telling me no, a real high top, top regarded specialist surgeon um, in hernia repairs, to then somebody telling me I had a gap there. I then had a ultrasound scan. I've had so many different scans, honestly. Um, and this was, I actually went to the doctor, not necessarily about my hernia problem, about the bladder related problems. So I was referred to a urologist who I seen in January of this year. Um, but it was told in December of last year that I had a third hernia. So I haven't come out and said that on this, on my channel, but that it was, <laughs> I really thought for what I'd gone through that that was, I really didn't think I was going to get through it. That was my first thought. And lots of low mood, lots of, I hate to use the word depression, but it really, really affected me. Really affected me. Um, January, I seen a specialist, urologist specialist, and um, went through so many different problems, things which it could be, which it couldn't be. Um, and bearing in mind, last year, I spent a lot of the time cutting out carbonated beverages, switching to decaffeinated coffee, cutting out certain foods and doing this whole diary plan for about four months. And it made not a difference to my bladder at all. Um, and actually now it has been highlighted. What are we? We've just gone into March. I have had two specialists talk to me about my bladder related problems after having hernia surgeries twice. Apparently they think there's no connection, but however, I beg to differ, um, but that's still going on. Um, but they go quiet, they shy away from it. But to be honest with you, as long as I get the problem sorted, I don't, that's not really come into my mind frame at the moment. Um, I have been recently now and had a urodynamics test, which is as horrific as it sounds with tubing up into your bladder, then filling your bladder up and then taking measurements and tests and things to see what's happening, what shouldn't be happening. Um, horrific, painful, uncomfortable, undignified, but they try to make it as dignified as possible, but just horrific. After that, I've then recently, a couple of days ago, where I'm very sore, had a cystoscopy, which is a camera up into your bladder. Yes, you can imagine how they get there. It is horrific. Um, I'm very, very sore. Um, now, to be told, after seeing the specialist, the consultant who'd done that, to be told that I am now going to be having surgery to increase the size of my bladder, as I have a small capacity and my bladder muscles are not working the right sequence, so they're going to sort that out for me. So it just feels that I can just breathe a sigh of relief. Of course, I'm worried because I have to have another anaesthetic. Um, and a very frightening experience with this clunking sensation in my groin. I thought I was going to be able to put off 
the third hernia surgery for a while and when it was confirmed I got a call from my doc my local doctor's surgery to say that it was confirmed that I had a third hernia when there was problems please come back and see us um, and actually last night I was getting out of the bath and bang I could feel something in my groin and very often which happens if I cough or I sneeze sometimes I feel this drop in my groin same groin my right side and I, I try not to panic but it goes really really hot really really which is not unusual because I had that with my last two hernias really hot really kind of almost numb but painful and then this will go away quite quickly if I sneeze or cough it comes down um, and but this time it's strange because it's not like a bulge which comes through um, it's somewhere but I can't necessarily see it but I can feel something comes down it's a horrible sick feeling um, it's very hot very very strange sensation and last night was unbearable and I actually honestly was worried and I really thought I was gonna have to take myself to accident and emergency fortunately after about 20 minutes it passed I've been to see uh, a doctor this morning and I'm told that I was very, very lucky if it happens again, I'm to take myself to A&E because it could be some sort of strangulation. Um, and telling the consequences if that was to happen was such a wake up call because I've been going on, not really changing things, carrying on lifting things, um, just trying to act as normal for as long as possible. And again, putting up a front with how this is affecting me, but it is affecting me. Um, so it's a huge, huge thing. So, yeah. So now I'm referred to a specialist in hernia repairs and I'm waiting to have a third hernia repair. But I'm going to ask them because at one point last year I was I was asking them because the problems I was having in this clunking sensation wasn't never really looked at as it could be a possible third hernia. Now I know it is and we found that out from December. Um, I was contemplating, they were contemplating rather having the hernia mesh taken out but the repercussions of that happening could have left me with lots of problems one of them being um not being able to have um fertility so not being able to have a family which i would love to get married and have a, a family and this um and a wife and a perfect home that's what i want to do so when something this rubbish going on now affects that huge so mesh removal was not a problem was not sort of something i considered um having more put in for this third repair worries me it also worries me having another anaesthetic um, and an idea what I'd like the the resizing of my bladder and the hernia repairs happen at the same time but I'm told that can't happen um, so that's all going forward so I'm waiting for an appointment for my bladder surgery and I am waiting for an appointment for my third hernia repair um, I've had a feminal uh, hernia I've had an inguinal hernia and apparently now I have another feminal Hernia. I've got a cone of mesh for the, her uh, for the feminal hernia and I've got a plate of mesh for the inguinal. So that's what's been going on. In a way I kind of feel a little bit more relieved because I've always come to YouTube for my channel as a bit of a journal, a virtual journal, getting it out there, how I'm feeling, how I'm coping with things. Yeah, I do lots of product reviews. Yes, I do lots of um, sort of hairstyle reviews for myself and things on here and I get some amazing comments so thank you very much for lots of people who ask me opinions related to hair thing and all sorts like that but my channel I do use as a virtual journal and just to overcome things and to help me deal with things and I've done this today number one to share my story number two to be a bit of a milestone so I can look back on this in the future and think that yeah I got through it and I can see see a positive light and yeah, so I do have to change my way of life, I have to admit, no heavy lifting, no sort of stretching, no sort of things over the top. But um but yeah, I've got my new my new job is coming up, so my new uh, accountancy role is coming up in line with all my studying which I've been working really hard with, so I cannot wait for that. I just hope that I don't have to have anything done kind of on an emergency. Last night really really did worry me. So there we go but of course there I always try to think there is always somebody worse off um, and I have a huge motto which I heard one day with somebody in awful circumstances that none of us are promised to tomorrow so I try to cherish and be thankful for everything I have for every single day and hold those closest to me dear and close um, particularly my parents my brothers and my nan um, and my other grandparents and close people to me but um yeah that's it about me at the moment that's my update so if you're wondering if you had seen my previous health update, 
that was it for now. Okay, so I realise a lot we covered there, but thank you very much for watching. It was more for me to have something on here to relate back to in the future, but if you can take anything away from this, or even just me opening up about my experience with hernia problems, you think that they're going to be simple, but everyone is different, and mine have not been simple. In fact, they've been traumatic and quite horrific. Um, but yours might well be simple. So if you're sat there and you're thinking, I've just been told I've got a hernia, please, please do not think that you will have an experience like mine. I've been told mine is a very extraordinary uh, case and try not to worry about it. You will get sorted in the end. OK, thank you very much for watching my clip. And until next time, we will see you then. I'll try staying positive. You do so also. OK, thanks very much. Bye now.